part two, we're going to find limits graphically and numerically. We're first going to learn how to estimate a limit using a numerical or graphical approach, and then learn different ways that a limit can uh, fail to exist, and then study and use the formal definition of a limit. So let's see if we can't go ahead and get into this stuff. So first of all, we're going to talk about estimating a limit using a numerical or graphical approach. So uh, suppose you're asked to sketch the graph of the function given of f given by f of x equal to x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1, where obviously x cannot be equal to 1 because that will make it undefined because of division by 0. Uh, for all values other than 1, you can use the standard curve sketching technique. However, at 1, it is not clear what to expect. To get an idea of the behavior of the graph of f near x equal to 1, you can use two sets of x values. One set that approaches 1 from the left and one that approaches 1 from the right as shown in the table. So they already have a lot of the stuff done for us. We're going to move our screen down. I moved it down a little too far. So you can see in our table of values we're just plugging in. Now we're actually going to use notation to represent these things. So the notation that we're going to use as you can see if x approaches 1 from the left you'll see 1 with a kind of like a little negative exponent. And if it approaches from the right, you'll see one with a little positive exponent. Now, this negative exponent right here means that we're approaching from numbers that are less than one, where the positive exponent means we're approaching from numbers that are greater than one, or from the right here with a positive exponent and from the left with a negative exponent. So as you can see, as we get closer and closer to that value of 1, you can see the y values are getting closer and closer to what it looks like 3. And then on the other side, you can see uh, it's getting smaller and smaller and still getting closer and closer to 3. So as you can see from both sides, that uh, the function value approaches 3. So that's a very important concept for us. Now, obviously, we're going to be doing some pretty tedious calculations but we're doing this to form a knowledge of the material. And, and graphically, of course, a graph speaks uh, a lot more words than uh, anything else. So here you go, the graph of the function. Uh, if you were to simplify that function we had, uh, the x minus 1s would actually cancel from the numerator and denominator. It's actually going to leave us the graph of a nice little parabola. So a parabola, now this, the function is still undefined at that point, so there's actually a hole in the function. Um, as shown in the figure. So at 1 comma 3 there's actually a little hole and we like to call that um, well a hole even though it says gap up here. Although x cannot be equal to 1 you can uh, move arbitrarily close to 1 and the result f of x moves ar arbitrarily close to 3. Now as you can see they gave us a pretty good uh, graph right here to look at. Now if you were to actually graph this function on the calculator, so here you go, you can see I've typed in my function and here's the graph. The problem is, is here they have the nice little hole. On the graph here, I've even zoomed in a little bit, you can't see the hole. So here's x equal to 1, and that's the y value of 3 right there. Well, it looks just part of it, just like there's uh, no hole there at all. But as you can see, when you go to the table of values, you can see x equal to 1 is actually undefined. So sometimes be careful when you're using your calculator, because even though that value is undefined, um, the, the graph itself may actually look like... Uh, it's given because of the, the lack of detail in the pixels of the graphing calculator.